Right, we're on part five already. Um, this video title is um, Inconsistent Morality. Uh, and this is uh, something which I have thought about quite a bit and it involves trying to imagine um, that you are visiting the Earth um, from another planet. You're an intelligent being who's travelled somehow from another planet orbiting another star and you're just observing what's going on on the Earth. And um, the particular thing I would like to bring up is vegetarianism and veganism. And um, why do, why does society, um, and this obviously I'm particularly referring to our Western society, Britain and America, um, why do we? Why are we happy to eat chickens and pigs and uh, ducks and certain animals, but not others? Why? What? What? You know, eating horses, for example. Um, if you mention that in most situations, people will recoil in horror. How can you possibly eat a horse? Um, I don't really see what the big difference is. I'm um, not a vegetarian, but I'm. I would say I'm a sort of 95% vegetarian, meaning when I cater for myself, um, I very, very rarely eat meat. I don't make a point of buying it. Um, and that's on principle. Not that I dislike bacon or anything. I, I do like all of these things. They're, in many cases, more tasty than the vegetarian alternatives. Um, but I don't see what the big difference is between eating one species and another. Uh, and I would even go as far as to say, um, obviously I'm not a cannibal, and I don't think that eating other humans is a good idea, but I don't see why there's such a huge difference between eating other humans and eating other animals. We're all distant cousins. Um, anyway, th there are many other areas where our morality is inconsistent or would appear inconsistent to an outside observer. So that's an idea I would like to turn into something at some point. Next video title, how do we recognize pseudoscience? Um, the, an interesting observation about this is that the people who get labeled as pseudoscientists will never admit to being one. Um, it's just it's just one of those things, uh, you know, you, you can ask as many people as you like, you'll never find a pseudoscientist. Um, but I think this comes down to having an understanding about the scientific method um, properly applied. And there seems to be, amongst a lot of people, a, a lack of understanding about what the scientific method is. and how effective, how good it is. Um, that's something I would like to make a video on at some point. Um, something else, not not a catchy title, but Secular Humanist. Uh, I would like to work on that and um, just touching on the whole notion that um, a humanist presumably means somebody who cares about humanity, the uh, well-being and the long-term survival of humanity. And that's, so I would consider myself a secular humanist, meaning that I don't need religion uh, to help guide me in any way. I think religion is completely superfluous. Um, and a lot of it is pretty nonsensical. Um, I'm going to sneeze in a minute, so you have been warned. Um, another possible video title, Non-Religious Believers. There are a number of people I have met who do believe in God and Jesus, and they think the Bible is the you know what it says it is, um, but they don't consider themselves as religious. And this I find sort of interesting because from the outside, um, we just kind of assume that um, somebody who believes the holy books is 
religious, but it's worth listening to people who say they do believe it, but they're not religious. They do their worshipping at home. Um, at one point in time, I would have possibly put myself in this category. I This is going back many years. I thought that there probably was a god, um, but I didn't uh, relate to churches in any way. Um, going to church uh, was meaningless, a meaningless, pointless exercise. Um, another thing kind of connected with that is what is worship? Um, I've had a number of people telling me, <laughs> who obviously don't know me as well as I know myself, but they quite happy to say, oh yes, you worship the uh, evolution. You worship Albert Einstein. You worship Christopher Hitchens. Um, I would say that is nonsense, and if you say that, if you think that, then you really don't understand the difference between worship and respect, or even admire. Um, pretty obvious difference, but something I think is video worthy. Another possible title for a video is is 2012 a death cult? Um, obviously now we are in 2012 and there are a lot of people who believe that the world is going to end on the 21st or the 23rd of December of this year. Um, and I would like to explore um, why they think this, why they believe this, and whether such beliefs, which I think are quite dangerous, could end up turning, in, turning into some kind of self-fulfilling prophecy. Worth mentioning that um, Rob Lester, another video maker, I'll put a link to him below in the description box, and worth checking him out. He's made a lot of videos on this uh, subject, a lot of interesting stuff. Um, another video title. I'm going to be quite quick now because there's only three minutes of battery left in this thing. So, another video title, Reverse Engineering Our Worst Nightmares. Um, now this is something I do in my brain a lot. Um, I just think of the worst possible scenario for a situation, um, then work backwards and use that as a method for trying to make better decisions in life. And I think that could be applied to the way humanity treats the planet. So it could have an environmental perspective. If we continue to damage the environment, then we knacker the future for ourselves. We make things worse in the long run. Um, it's been a long time since I made a specific astronomy video, but I have already prepared, um, or partly prepared, um, part five and part six of my astronomy series. Um, part five is likely to be the solar system um, and part six other stars. Um, unfortunately I don't have the same editing capability that I used to so it's probably going to be a while before I can do anything with that. Um, but in terms of the solar system and astronomy in general one of the things which I think is most important to get through to people who don't know anything about it is the vast scale involved. Um, when you look out into the night sky it is dark and there are pinpoints of light, stars. Now one of the things which we think, when I say we, astronomers, science in general, we think that it doesn't matter how far something is away, if there is no matter in the way, um, no gas and dust, it's just a vacuum of space, then things don't decrease in brightness. So if the universe was infinite in size, we would expect the entire sky to be as bright as the surface of the sun, which it isn't. Which makes the point that stars and physical objects in the universe are very far apart. They're few and far between. Um, and it just goes to show how massive the scale of the universe is. That's all for now. That is the end of that particular list. For those who have stuck with me right the way through, thank you very much for watching. And uh, I hope that this gives some people some ideas for making videos.
Bye for now.